Hello there, welcome to another video where I summarise one of the topics from OCI Level Psychology Component 3 in about two minutes. Uh, this is two minute topics as opposed to 60 second studies because there's a bit more stuff. Hopefully the content in this is enough to get you most of the way through a part A, part B and part C question on the pre-adult brain development topic. It's one of the more fiddly ones and it doesn't often come up on uh, exam papers in Component 3 either, so worth knowing. Uh, so let's start the timer and see what we can do in two minutes. So the key research in this area is Barclay, Levinson and Gavin. There was a quasi-experiment where fMRI scans were given to 19 adults and 22 adolescents while playing a gambling game. Uh, gambles were either 50-50 or 100% win, 100% loss. They were never gambling with their own money to control for the effect of uh, income and how much money they had themselves. And they could either lose $7.50, win $19 or somewhere in between those two numbers. Uh, what they found were two things. One, teens take more risks due to the differences in their brain functioning. Uh, the teens, ventral striatums, remember that from Casey were hyperactive during the uh, gambling game, especially when given greater expected value. The reward center of their brain is really sensitive to greater rewards. They also found that as brain development continues, there's a declining risk taking behavior, which is backed up by the adults taking fewer risks. Uh, their prefrontal cortex became more developed as they got older, and that's the bit of our brain that tells us not to do something. Uh, they're also more risk averse due to a greater awareness of the value of reward, even when we controlled for the subjective value of money. Issues and debates in this area. Nature nurture? Uh, are differences in brain function biological and universal, or does upbringing play a role in our risk-averse behaviour? Uh, determinism also is a big factor here. Uh, it ignores individual differences among uh, teenager risk-taking, and it says that our actions are purely controlled by brain function. Individual situational, also an issue, kind of for the same reasons we've already said. Psychoscience uh, and reductionism also factors here. There are some methodological issues in the research of reliability, sampling bias, ethnocentrism, and validity. Um, could have a methodological standalone question on a topic like this, in which case you just have to talk about the studies. Uh, for part C, application, it's all about reducing risk. Uh, one example of this could be PSHE classes in school, like guest speakers from the police, uh, to develop cognitive control and cooling. Remember that from KC and C2? Um, we can also talk about legal protections, like banning gambling for people under the age of 18, which works by punishment and operant conditioning. Or we could also talk about graduated driver schemes, things like Pass Plus in the UK or the graduate schemes elsewhere in the world. Uh, it reduces the physiological arousal and excitement of having your friends in the car, for example, when you've just passed your test, you've got to have a responsible adult with you. Um, that was two minutes and five seconds. Quite a good summary, I reckon, for what is a very complicated study. There's a lot of brain stuff here. There's a lot of psychoscience stuff here. My advice for the part B question, the issues and debates, is be really clear on whether they're talking methodological issues or whether they're talking uh, theoretical issues. So methodological issues, you're just evaluating studies. Remember, more than one study if uh, you want to get into the top mark band. So you could use Willoughby, we've mentioned here. You could even use Casey from last year. Casey is a study of um, risk taking behavior and brain development, ultimately. So uh, borrowing Casey from C2, using it in C3 means you've got to learn less stuff because I'm sure you've already watched an excellent summary video of uh, Casey's study too. If you have any questions on this uh, topic area or anything else to do with child or criminal psychology or mental health, uh, please ask away in the comments. I'm working my way through the rest of the videos um, as quickly as I can. Um, sport and environment might be a bit more of a challenge because I don't normally teach those topics where I work um, and therefore uh, my knowledge is a little bit too um, broad to really be in depth and detailed. But if you have anything else you want to know for this study or anything else in childhood or crime, uh, let me know. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Cheers.